Welcome to the Star of Grind. And so how do people get meetings with you? Well, that's, <laughs> um, you know, uh, no, I wake, in general, yeah, not, not today. I, w I wake up uh, in the morning, I have five to 10 new emails from founders saying, I'm working on this thing, this is the best thing ever, do you have time tomorrow to meet at one? I, <laughs> uh, I appreciate their initiative, I really do, but I usually, my schedule usually books a couple weeks, and then by the end of the day, I have another five or 10. So in my career, I've, I've looked at well over 20,000 companies uh, in terms of email or talk to founders. 20,000 companies? I stopped counting at 20,000 five years ago. Wow. Uh, and you think that's typical of VCs? Yeah, I, I do think venture people see a lot. And I've invested in 23 companies in my career outside of some seed investments. So that's 1,000 to 1. It's a, or worse. Or worse. Yeah. And why is that? Um, why is that? Because uh, I don't really get excited about a lot. And the truth. And excited people, markets, are you, you right? Different VCs have invest in different areas, I mean, meaning either in people or in teams and markets and timing and what's your for, objective? For me, it's, it, it, for me, it, I've actually just recently figured this out, which is after doing this for se venture for 17 years, I figured out almost all the investments I wrote a check into, it, I had to have the feeling, <coughs> would I be a co-founder of this company? That wow. is the single best investment question that I've asked myself in my entire career, and I think it's largely responsible for all of my, the, the positive decisions I've made. And give me a, give me a couple of examples. Um, well, the last investment I made was in a guy named Sebastian Thrun, a company called Udacity that Steve knows um, and that I know of. Uh, some of you might know it. And I, I knew Sebastian for a while, and we were brainstorming about education, but when he was talking about the company, I was so excited by what he was doing that it could change the world. And for me, I'm the first person in my family tree to go to college. So I love what he's doing, and it can change the world, and it can be a great business. So that, to me, is just, I get naturally excited about that. I mean, as, a, as my job as an investor, I mean, I always pictured myself as funding revolutionaries, probably because I'm from a somewhat unruled, really poor part of Greece, where we've never respected the government of Greece. Um, Neither do any of us now. So well, yeah, it's, I'm glad. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's finally caught up. Um, and I think that's part of it, is that while I've always had a desire and some, uh, I've shown the tendencies of being a founder, I really want to back people who change the world. That's the most important thing at, for me at the end of the day. So aren't but I have do, to do that through a business. And so I don't, aren't you I don't doing believe nonprofits work. Financial calculations, or is it the first thing, this passion of I want to be a co-founder? I mean, you're looking at such I, I have this market. feeling of like, do I want to join these people? Do I want to be around them to build this company? And, and then what comes next? Do you do analysis or? Um, well, with Sebastian, after an hour, I offered him $5 million at 25 post, <laughs> which some very smart people told me, wow, that's a bit high, don't you think? Did, you, did he take it? Yeah, he looked a little puzzled about why it was that high. All right. Well, did anybody follow on? I mean, did he get more investment? No, I, want, I believe in the company, so I want to have ownership. I'm not an asset allocator. Did he raise more money for Udacity? Though? Yeah, he did. He just raised a Series B from Mark Andreessen and Peter Levine of, of A16Z. So at a higher valuation than you put in. Yes, thank you, Mark Andreessen and Peter Levine. <laughs>